this is Gina with Jewelry Making Professor and Brett and I decided to do a little video tutorial on um, just some basic easy novice techniques of taking photographs with a click uh, you know click and shoot uh, digital camera um, of your jewelry and try to get some you know better uh, quality uh, photographs just very simply. So I have this uh, Coolpix um, Nikon uh, digital camera that's probably about seven years old or, or so and it's uh, it's pretty beat up in weather but I use it to take my my pictures um, and it's very simple of some of the things that I do. Now like I said, um, I think this is only four megapixels too. And on my camera, there's just a couple of simple settings that I have um, to take photographs with. So it's nothing real fancy. Um, the first thing is a, it's called a macro setting. Um, some of you, most of you should have it on your camera and it looks like a little fo flower most of the time. I don't know if it can be seen on camera. Um, I'm probably t showing you a picture of myself here. Um, but it's just, it should be show somewhere in your screen and um, you know, you can go under, uh, you know, settings of some sort um, you should have a manual with your camera, hopefully, and if not, you can also go online and look up your camera type and, and get information on it. But you, I, mine you find under, um, under menu, and um, then it's called close-up or macro. And so that's my first setting. The other thing, my camera has something that it's called vibration reduction which I found once again under menu and uh, setup. And I'll try to find that and show you. Um, or, yeah, setup. And then it's actually called VR on my camera. And I'll turn it this way, see if you can see that. And um, that helps keep the movement down in the photograph. Now, a lot of my images, I do not use a tripod, but I'm going to show you a couple different things that I do do. Um, I do did buy a little mini tripod. I stack up books, and a lot of times I just hold my camera close to my body like this, and I don't get a lot of shaking or cloudiness in my photographs. Um, and that's a lot of when you get unclear pictures, that's probably why, because you're having some vibration or shakiness. The other thing is um, setting the size of the photograph, and I can do that once again. Um, let's see, under my menu, I have to get back to the right place again, um, under image mode. and then you can set the size. Now, I have mine set for PC screen, okay? It's easier to take a photograph that is in a bigger format and reduce it down. If you take it from a small format and try to make it bigger, it's gonna be all pixelized and unclear and not a very good photograph. So those are three things that I'm gonna suggest that you try to look into and set your camera at first. And then lastly, I never take a photograph with a flash. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple different lighting things you can do that are very simple. Um, and all of these things, um, some of these techniques are things that you have at home or around the house. Um, and hopefully this will be helpful um, and play around with, you know, at least the taking picture part and then we'll show you a couple of things about downloading the photograph and, um, you know, working with, um, you know, then formatting it or playing with the photograph after you've taken it. So um, we'll go from there. So I just have a couple of um, simple things. This is just a regular desk 
light we're inside and I have a piece of jewelry and I have just a piece of, uh, of white paper for now. You can put a couple different, you know, surfaces if you want, but just for a basic photograph um, that's clean, you know, piece of white paper is fine. I'm going to turn on my lamp and um, you can see that there is some, you know, creating of some harsh lines or shadows. I don't know if you can tell that or not. Um, one way to diffuse that, some people think you have to have a light box or um, a light tent, you know, which is once again not very expensive, but um, surprisingly you can make a light box by, this is a rather big one, but um, this is a, just a, uh, tup uh, not a Tupperware, Rubbermaid um, plastic container that is kind of frosted and you can put that in front of a light put your I don't know if you can see this maybe I'll turn it this way um, put your piece of jewelry inside okay put your piece of jewelry inside of that tub, that rubber made box and you can see it softens the light. I can also turn the light a little bit and adjust the shadowing and the lighting as well. Another thing that I sometimes do was will actually use sunlight and put the box in a windowsill and use sunlight. Um, and once again, it softens or diffuses the light. Um, so this is kind of like make it home uh, light box. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of times when I'm taking photographs, I will just, um, because I had that vibration reduction feature on my uh, camera, I don't have a problem. I usually just hold my camera. Um, or there are times where I will take a stack of books, okay, and I will use that as a tripod. And then sometimes, you know, if I want an angle, I'll either, you know, um, angle up my books or just tilt my camera up or down so I can um, get an angle on my piece. I don't know if you can see the screen or not, but that will stabilize my uh, movement as well. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a photograph of this bracelet um, this way, and like I said, I turn off my flash. So um, you hit your little lightning bolt feature that is what is on my camera to adjust my flash, and then I turn it off. And then I, you can um, pan in and out. I don't know if my hand is in the way there. And then what I do is I just push my button down lightly and my camera will give me a little green light to tell me that everything is good as far as focus and lighting to take that photograph. So that's another, you know, way to do it. I did get this little itty bitty tripod um, at Target and it was only like $6. And once again, what is nice is it will give me a little bit more stable stabilization on my camera. And I can also adjust it to different angles. So I'm going to move my stack of books. Oops. And adjust my, my camera. I like to actually take pictures with it on the side like this. And then I can angle it down, pan in and out. And then take my photograph. I usually will take um, somewhere between six to ten photographs of one piece. 
and different angles, different, you know, adjusting lighting a little bit. So I have a couple of different ones to choose from. And that's usually enough for, for me for just doing a single, if I'm putting up one picture of my piece. If you are putting it on a website and you want to show different, um, different, you know, close-ups of um, your piece, and um, if you're selling it on a website of some sort, then once again, I might take several of the different angles so I have a couple to choose from. And then from here, I'll just download it into um, my computer and then um, be able to adjust the size or if I need to do any kind of um, adjustment of color or shadows and things like that, I can do it very simply. So this is, um, doesn't cost a lot of money to do it. Um, this camera, like I said, is probably about six or seven years old and might have cost me a hundred and something dollars um, back then and uh, now probably about fifty dollars. So um, you can take photographs that are very nice um, and be able to use them to show and sell your jewelry. We're going to show a couple of different um, ways of going outside, which also I like to do um, as well if the weather is permitting, and just show you some other simple techniques with that too. So here we are outside. Um, time of day actually, you know, will have an effect. Right now, unfortunately, it's noon because this is when we could do it. Um, but earlier in the morning or at dusk actually is pretty good at light, um, lighting wise outside. Um, you know, here we are where we're not right under a bush, but enough where we it diffuses some of the bright sunlight of noon. Um, I have a tray table, piece of white paper, my camera on a tripod, um, the, oops, in the wind. Um, it does have kind of a harsh um, shadow, but that's something, an effect that we can... Uh, work with possibly with the, the um, photo program. We have a shadow of a leaf right now. We're going to try to avoid that a little bit by adjusting it. <laughs> Could make things interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do, once again, I turn off my flash. I don't need my flash. Um, I'm going to adjust my tripod and just pan in and out. I also sometimes will like to um, take a photograph um, on a surface like a rock or on granite or something like that to give it some, you know, a different background. And so I press down my, um, not all the way, I press down my button and it will focus for me and tell me when it's good to take the picture and then I can take the picture. Um, and like I said, I'll try to do a couple different photographs or images, um, angles rather. So I have a couple things to work with. Now I pressed on my button, I have a red light, so it's telling me lighting wise that it's not good to take this picture. So whatever little adjustment I just did, angle was not good for lighting wise. So this slight adjustment I just made says it is good. And that's really all that I do to take pictures of my jewelry. Um, you know, doesn't cost a lot, not a lot of um, hassle, and um, then from there I just download it into my, cam my uh, computer, and I use a program called Comp uh, Picasa, which is through Google. It's a free program, and it just has... Um, it's once again very user friendly, not very fancy as far as a, a, a program to um, alter your images. Um, and we'll show you how to do that also. Okay, so now we've taken our photographs and um, the next step would be to getting the photographs off our camera and onto our computer. There's a couple ways you can do it. I usually will just take my um, memory card out of my computer and that's uh, this little card here um, that you should have um, somewhere installed into your, into your camera. Um, there's also a USB cable that probably came with your camera 
that you would connect. Um, my camera has a little outlet here from here and connected into your computer and that basically makes your camera talk to your computer and um, then a menu would come up and um, you just follow the prompts of the menu of how to take those photographs off of the camera and onto your computer. So we're going to take this disc and we're going to um, insert it into an input into our computer. Not all computers have this, but um, and we just push it in all the way. It should click in and then this menu comes up, okay? And it will say import um, all media files. There should only be photographs on here, so I'm going to hit yes. It says delete imported media from the device or, um, or media. I usually do. I, I don't usually keep my pictures on my card once I've downloaded them onto my computer. Um, so you can choose if you want to store them on your, um, your disk or not. And then hit OK. And so now um, this is saying there's a button down here that says import. So I'm going to click import. Uh, it says, are you sure you want to delete the imported media from the device? So it, once again, it's checking to make sure that that's okay. And I'm going to say yes. So I only have a f couple of photographs on here, and so it's going to download quite quickly. Okay, so now we have downloaded our photographs, and I'm just going to go to my, um, here, my folder that have, has downloaded. And there's my photographs in a folder um, that I just took that were downloaded. And um, as I mentioned before, there's a program called Picasa that you can um, download offline through Google, and it's free. So I've already downloaded it onto the computer. And I'm going to open up my first photograph. <laughs> and um, then you'll see down here, oops, where'd it go? It will say edit in Picasa. So I'm actually going to click yes because I want to do some editing. This first photograph was something that I just took with no lighting, no tripod, no nothing uh, in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so over here to the left is uh, Picasa and it um, has all different um, editing, photo editing um, options. And so you can see this. there's some shadows and it's a little uh, dark. So we'll try hitting auto contrast and that just lightened it up, okay? And then I could mess around with a fill light and um, make adjustments if I wanted to, okay? If I didn't like that for some reason, then I can just do undo fill light, okay? So what's nice about Picasa is um, you're not, once you do something, make an adjustment, you can, you're not committed to it. And then I can always do re, redo it, okay? So the first, um, the first screen of this will show you things like crop, straighten, you know, auto color. We could do that too, so that just adjusted the color. I could put text in there. Um, I can do touch-ups and a, a, a bunch of different, just simple little um, adjustments to the photograph. There's also another program called Picnic, so I can actually hit Edit in Picnic, which is just another photo program that is associated with Google um, that has some other features too. And I actually do like to use that for, I like their cropping tool better than uh, Picasso's cropping tool. Then the other, you can hit the sum here and you can make adjustments to the lights and shadows um, just by scrolling. Um, so that's the second screen. The third screen you can do some different effects. So sometimes like I like to use this soft focus and you can just adjust how much you want that to be and that's a cool effect and um, you see that a lot in you know professional photographs so just a simple little um, things that you can find in here great uh,
gradual tinting, you can do black and white, you can do glow. Um, so all kinds of really cool photo um, techniques, I guess, um, that you can find in Picasso. Okay, and then I just want to show you a couple other screens in Picasso. Um, I'm going to cancel what I just did there. Um, this is the fourth screen. You can do some other cool effects, color effects. But um, since we're talking a little bit about like, you know, some professional presentation and, um, you know, especially if you're putting stuff up on Etsy or website, you can create a border and look at that. You can um, do your thickness and adjust the border and um, make it look very nice and professional as well in your presentation. Um, so Picasso is a really um, user-friendly program. It's easy. It's free. Um, you can either share or email or, you know, do other things with it. Um, so that, like I said, that first photograph was one I just took without uh, any lighting, anything, um, anything fancy, really. Okay, so that was uh, the first one I took. The second one, um, you saw me demo inside with lights in my little makeshift light box. So that's what the photograph looked like um, without anything done to it. So I'm going to go to my first screen, and I might do auto contrast and see what that looks like. It really didn't do much. Auto color, not too much. Um, I can play with my fill light to lighten it up a little bit. Um, another feature I really like to do um, is sharpening. So especially with jewelry and reflections of lights, I can sharpen my lines a little bit. And it's just a slight bit. I don't know if you can tell. But I like to use that one. That's one of my favorite um, tools. And then another good one on our first screen is to straighten. So you see my um, my bracelet's a little cockeyed. So I can actually straighten that or adjust my image a little bit. I can crop it. And you have different options here as far as cropping tools. And, you know, play around with that, whatever you, you know, how, however much you want to image. And what's also cool, once again, you can preview it before you make that commitment. That's what it looks, the crop looks like, you know. And then if I don't like it, I can hit cancel and make an adjustment. There's a red eye, but hopefully our jewelry does not have any red eyes um, that we have to play with. And like I said, there's a lot of different techniques. Um, if we want to play with shadows, we go to the second one. We can intensify shadows, lighten shadows, do color temperatures, make it warmer, cooler, and um, do highlights. Highlights is something I, I play with a lot, um, fill light. So once again, you don't like it, just hit undo tuning. And I can go, I can undo everything I did and go back to my original photograph. Okay, so the last photograph I want to show you is the one that we took outside um, in the sunlight. So once again, you can see the difference. Um, I can crop it down and preview it. And let's just say apply, you know, I'll fiddle with it later. And then I can do an auto contrast. So you can see that there's um, the harsh shadows from sunlight. So that just actually get made it a little brighter. Um, I might want to undo that. I might do an auto color, you know, play with the fill light a little bit. Um, and then. I can mess with shadows here in my second screen temperature 
you know, it depends on what, what kind of look, what I'm looking to, to achieve here. So, I might want the shadows there. It depends. Um, and then, like I said, I like to do sharpen. I don't know if you could tell, it looks a little bit cloudy. Not The edges aren't real, real sharp. So if I sharpen it, you can see it gets a little bit cleaner, the lines. And then um, I like to, you know, do some different effects on it. There's a glow effect. I can do intensity of the glow, bring out some colors, the radius, all of that. I might take that off because I don't know if I like that. <laughs> um, and then it will say, do I want to apply changes? Yes, once I go to another screen. Um, you do some fun things, like here's a Polaroid look to it. You know, I can rotate. I can play with colors in the backgrounds. It's a really fun program, and honestly, I didn't take it to do a tutorial. I didn't take a class. I just played around with different things. And you can, you know, this is not as powerful as maybe um, Photoshop is, but you can do some really cool, fun things with it. Um, so I want to go back, actually. We're going to stop here, and then I'm going to show you a little bit about sizing. Okay, now we're going to talk about sizing. And um, down here, it will tell you, I told you that um, when I take a photograph, I take it in a, in a big format, a uh, big size. So this is um, how many pixels? This is pretty big. So if you try to download that into our forum um, or some other you know, stores or websites um, to sell your jewelry, it's going to be too big unless it has like an auto adjust. Um, our forum does not. So to post in our forum, you want to readjust that size. How you would do that in Picasa is you're going to come up here to File, and then hit Export Picture to Folder. And then um, you can name you know, your exported folder. So you can, if you want to make a separate folder for the, those adjusted pictures, you can. So I'm going to resize it. The original size I'm going to just show you was uh, like 10, 24. You take this little bar and you can adjust it down. And a good size for our forum is actually 480. Okay, and then I'm going to hit export. and now open it and show you that's the size and that's a really good size okay it will um, you know show nicely in the forum it's not too big and not too small it probably doesn't take as long to download so now you would um, it's saved into a folder and you can just upload that photograph to the forum or to you know other um, stores or, or sites. Okay, lastly I want to tell you, um, you may or may not know that this, but um, when you download um, off your camera it usually gives you, you know, some kind of a, a, a code. This says DSCN, you know, and a number. So you, if you want to rename it, um, you just go, uh, I actually right clicked and then hit rename and it's going to highlight it and then, you know, I might just put, uh, you know, glass bracelet, hit enter, and then I just renamed um, that file.